Hello, good to see you guys. Well, I guess I don't see you, but you see me. How about I pray? Gracious and loving and holy God, I pray that the words that come out of my mouth, may they be your words, and may the ears that your words fall upon, may they be open and alert to what you have to say to each and every one of us. And above all else, God, I pray that you would hide me behind the cross, but also all those who are within your midst, hide us, hide your people of the church behind the cross so that people don't see us, but they see Jesus. We ask this in you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So several years ago at this church I used to serve, we had this gospel group come and sing. The lead singer looked up at the banner during an intermission and the, anyway, this banner was in the front of the sanctuary. It was a picture of a vine and grapes, and it said, I am the vine. The guy pointed at the banner, and he said, This is one of my most favorite passages. For Jesus said, I am the vine, and you are the branches. And then the guy stopped talking. He grinned, and then he held up an imaginary set of clippers like this. And he said, Whoever does not abide in me, snip, snip. And he just continued grinning like a mule eating peanut butter, as if he had the inside scoop as to who was in and who was to be snipped out and banished to a lake of fire for all eternity. And I was appalled because for one thing, as Christians, we shouldn't take pleasure in thinking someone is headed for an eternal hell and a lake of fire for the damned. There's nothing gleeful about the loss of another human being. Not to mention, this is a complete misunderstanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus is about the good news, not about bad news. And personally, I'm really sick and tired of hearing other church people just focus on bad. This guy completely missed the point of what Jesus meant. Jesus was not focusing on banishing people to an eternal fire. I even have a great number of commentaries written by some of the best Christian scholars out there, and they simply do not focus on the snipping and banishment to eternal fire. I mean, seriously, think back to Jesus' conversation with Nick at night. In John chapter 3, Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a member of the Jewish court. He came to Jesus under the cover of darkness because Nicodemus was afraid of his own peers. Pharisees are often portrayed as villains in the stories of the gospel of Jesus. But Jesus took the time to have a loving conversation with Nicodemus. And Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn the world, but to save it. Or what about chapter 8 when John reports the woman caught in adultery? Jesus stops the Pharisees from stoning her to death by simply stating the obvious. He said, whomever is without sin... Go ahead, cast the first stone. Or when John reports about the woman at the well in chapter 4, the woman, a Samaritan, which is a big red flag in the Jewish culture, she had been with many men, another red flag. But Jesus invited her to serve him and to sit down and talk, to have a holy conversation. Now, does that sound like someone eager to banish people into an eternal fire? It sounds more like someone eager to start an inclusive and loving community of all people. Let me say that again, all people. You see, Jesus' point is that God is the true source of life, which is love. A love that compels us to love other people who are not like us and to love ourselves in a healthy way. And the only way we can do that is to love God. Jesus is the vine to that source of life, to God. He's telling us that we are like grapes that thrive when growing on a healthy branch connected to the vine. Abundant, vigorous, and healthy, productive life happens when the source of life, of love, and that is God, is connected to the branches. Jesus' speech here in John 15 is simply an invitation to connect to the vine. And that's Jesus. This is a holy, mysterious, and yet practical relationship with God. 
As Methodists, we traditionally practice what is known as a service of Wesleyan covenant redual, renewal. Sorry, The main focus is to put ourselves in service to God, to put God first in our lives, and in doing so, we connect to the vine of Jesus. Now, we normally do this on the first week of January, but this is a different year, so we're doing it on the whatever day this is that you watch this video. But I want to encourage you to listen to these words from the Wesley's Covenant of Prayer. I am no longer mine own, but thine. Put me to what you will and rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full or let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, O oh glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Oh my gosh, isn't that awesome? It's really about connecting to God, to letting ourselves be attached to God, to put God in control of our lives. Now, in a moment, you're going to be invited to, particip uh, to participate in a call to be in covenant with God and with each other. Then you'll read Wesley's covenant prayer together in a unison and conclude worship with the sacrament of Holy Communion, where we celebrate the presence of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, thanking God what the new things God is doing in our lives. As you receive communion, you'll also be given a card that contains the Wesleyan Covenant Prayer. Now, many people take these cards and place them somewhere where they can see them daily, such as the bathroom mirror, or maybe the refrigerator, would you consider committing to beginning each day reading Wesley's Covenant Prayer until Ash Wednesday, which is really about 50 days away? You can join countless people who have used this tool as a way to stay spiritually and physically connected to the vine. That is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.